I'm heading back to Tin Can Bay after a few days up at Fraser Island. There's a big rain cell heading my way from the north, so after losing a day to keel repairs, I made the decision to use the next couple of days exploring Inskip Point and the Tin Can Bay Inlet. Maybe putting on all this sunscreen is wishful thinking, but even when it's overcast, the sun takes a big toll on my skin. Summer dreams of fall I've been waiting for those leaves, my love Will you guide me through the cold? When I was doing the research for this trip, I came across fishing reports that promised a bay full of long-tailed tuna, together with Spanish mackerel and even some giant trevally. It was another case of should have been here yesterday. The forecast was for winds increasing to 15 knots from the north, and it didn't disappoint. I would love to have had a better system for the mast track. This type of track is very prone to jamming, making it slow and frustrating, especially when sailing solo. Having a nice sail, about six and a half knots. The breeze picked up a little bit, we're getting about 10. At one stage, we're about to go past Gary's Anchorage Northern approach again. So yeah, so with the, with the current in our favour this time we've been doing six, six and a half, seven knots of time. Ten knots of breeze. It takes a bit of concentration staying in the channel and so we can save it all. The wind filled in beautifully from the north and it wasn't long before I was heading south at around 7 knots with a bit of tide assist. Then in the blink of an eye a gust of wind lifted my hat. What is there to do when you lose a hat that has graced your head for more than 30 years? Well I decided to write a fitting memorial, an ode to a hat. Northern breeze, the whiff of autumn, urge a dancing Mozart south. Clouds of fury span the north, spirits of tempest and storm give chase, heralding gusts and squalls that spy a hat without a safety tie. My hat of rabbit flocked and felted, my trusty Akubra weather-beaten and belted, decades of travel across this planet yarns to tell when friends are gathered. My hat is lifted from my nut, lofted into a foaming wake. Holes around a weathered rim means my treasured hat can't swim. It sinks before I reach the helm, where shouldered south by tide and storm. Loping along at a clipper's pace, my hat no longer in the race. Lifted like a beach umbrella, it's left me as a broken fella. My hat that's been my friend of years has fled my head with many tears. There is a wind that brings despair, the very same that drives my boat. Winter storms can get us down, but spring will keep our dreams afloat. And so I'm left alone to ponder a final hat to grace my head. I'm willing to place a decent bet that there's another hat in me yet.
There is a shallow bar that guards the mouth of the Tin Can Bay Inlet. As the wind developed into a steady 15 knots, I was captivated by an exhilarating sail across the southern section of the Straits. A small amount of swirl gets into the Straits via the Wide Bay Bar, and combined with the outgoing tide, it can get quite choppy. You can see the bar that I'm approaching dead ahead, and it was only a minute or two later I had to throw in an emergency tack as the depth was reduced to 1.4 metres, which is the same as my draft. That's what can happen in unfamiliar waters when the skipper takes his eye off the chart, even for a short while. I was a little bit crestfallen tacking away from the sandbar, with the cruel loss of my faithful Lacubra front of mind. I'd planned to get into the inlet, but after being deflected east to the starboard buoy that indicates the extent of a long, thin finger of sand, I changed my mind and decided to head into Pelican Bay for a safe and extremely calm overnight anchorage. At first, you pass through the area where cruising yachts anchor while waiting for suitable conditions of tide and wind to cross over the Wide Bay Bar and out into the Coral Sea before sailing south to Brisbane. There are only a few boats anchored here today, but sometimes there can be dozens of them sitting quietly on their hooks. The Manta Ray Ferry Service operates out of Pelican Bay with its two vehicular ferries that cart tourists and four-wheel drives back and forth to Fraser Island. One of the ferries is on the market for a very reasonable price if you have a use for one. There is a floating jetty where they carry out basic maintenance and a heavy mooring buoy further into the waterway. A couple of older boats lay at anchor, now home for thousands of welcome swallows, which I would think are probably not that welcome at all given the mess they make. One of these boats is a liverboard and he's running his generator charging up his batteries, so I take advantage of Mozart's shallow draft and anchor furthest into the inlet, where I settle into a beautiful evening preparing my first solid meal of protein for a few days. The golden brush strokes of the magic hour before sunset strikes the water and glances off the cabin as I prepare for dinner. I'm pleasantly surprised that I don't need to sling the mosquito net over the cabin as I've been in the habit of doing. Sleeping aboard with the pop top up is close to sleeping under the stars and the absence of the insect mesh will make the night sky even more brilliant than it has been on previous nights. LED lighting strips sure make a difference to the atmosphere when camping in a boat these days. Typically, a little cabin like this would be bathed in a feeble, warm glow of one or two incandescent lights, but I don't miss this at all. And I can prepare one of my favourite meals of lavish strips of bacon and lightly fried eggs under a proper task light. In my next video, I'll be touring about the Tin Can Bay Inlet enjoying the final day of this trip and taking in the many beautiful and mysterious older ships in the surreal light of evening. Many are sitting on what is probably their final anchorage. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell so you get notified when I publish.